Hi, I'm Chris Bullock. My wife Carolyn and I are owners of the Wandering Bull LLC. We're one of the country's largest Native American craft suppliers. We sell a wide range of products including craft materials, contemporary art, and antiques. My parents started the business in 1969 when we were kids running around at powwows. And more than 50 years later, our family business is still going strong. Hi, today we're going to talk about and do some applique stitch. There's got multiple examples here in front of me. We'll talk about them, do a little show and tell. Then we'll jump into the nuts and bolts on how to do applique stitch. We're going to do the single needle technique. After we've completed that, we're going to go into the two needle technique. A little more complicated, but it, you, the results will be roughly the same. A pair of Chippewa moccasins. And the floral design is in that technique, the applique stitch. So there's multiple applications. This old bag, early 1900s, 1920s, from the Northwest Coast people. These people are the opposite end of the country from us here in New England, and they do a similar technique. It's an abstract floral design on the top of that. This piece of beadwork is done in the applique stitch. So this piece probably 50, 60 years old. I'll turn it over. And it was beaded on leather and they backed it with a piece of newsprint. You can just barely see the newsprint coming through. There's all the stitches because this piece is not finished, never was, never was applied to an object. Um, so there's all the, all the stitches. Once again, from the Great Lakes people, it's a necktie and done in that same technique. It's got some bead dangles at the bottom, nice fringe, and edge beaded. We also have done a video on edge beading. You can look at that. This piece is back so you don't see those stitches. This little charm bag, probably 100 years old, done in the same technique that we're gonna talk about. Edge beaded at the top, some silk ribbon, edge beaded on the sides. Great bag, great little beads. It's a nice little charm bag. And the last example we'll talk about is this reproduction of a Cheyenne style teepee bag. The band across the top is done in lazy stitch. We have done a video on that as well. Tin cones with horse hair. And this is all done in that two needle technique. The objects were beaded first and then the background was filled in. The sides are lazy stitch and it's constructed on brain tan bison. This bag would be a storage bag for a teepee. Um, this is a reproduction. It's probably, I probably made it 20 years ago. So. Let's move on and jump into that um, single thread applique stitch. So I have a variety of beads. If you're looking for beads, you can certainly go to wonderingbull.com. We sell a beading kit. So this book comes in the kit. We reproduced the book. It was an old book done in oh, 1950s. So we maintained some of the drawings from that time period. And it was before they actually had color photographs to like reproducing catalogs was, was very expensive. So they basically drew that and added the color. So this is from the original book printed in the, the 50s. And here's a whole page on that applique stitch that we're going to work on today. So if you need beads, you can order the bead kit. Comes in a bag and the beads in the back. So basically in that kit comes 10 vials of beads, beeswax, thread, and 10 oaks um, beading needles. So it, it's a basic kit. You can use it for applique, lazy stitch, loom work. Um, and the book is, it's a small booklet. It's designed to give you a rough idea and some design patterns um, for you to you know, produce some of your own craft work. So we're gonna to start today and we're gonna to work on 
a wood embroidery hoop. There's the back. And this is a big hoop for our little project. We're not going to complete a project. I'm basically going to show you the techniques today. So you got an idea and then hopefully you'll be able to take this, the technique and go ahead and make your own products. So assuming that you're going to make a bag, I've cut out the template. I've outlined it on my black fabric. And I've used um, wax crayons to draw onto the, the black fabric. So you wouldn't be able to use pencil or pen. So my rough outline on my bag. And assuming if you want to put a flower in the bottom. The fabric I've selected today is wool. We sell wool by the yard. Black, blue, red when it's available. So there's a basic flower in the center. And I would go ahead and draw the lines across. So there's our rough flower design. And would be very similar to one of these. We're not going to copy it exact. Um, so the beads in the kit would give you enough beads to do a basic small pattern. And we're going to do some these guys have green vines. We're going to do some white vines. And my thoughts on this bag was we'll do a little vine, a little vine, and one. And you can add some leaves in place for that single needle technique. I'm going to dump my beads on the table and. We're using Tenno seed beads, and in the kit become, comes with the Tenno seed beads. So if there's a color that you like and you need to order more, you can just call us on the phone, the 1-800 number, and say, hey, I bought the kit, I'm looking for more yellow beads, and one of the girls who answers the phone know exactly what you're looking for. So the Tenno needle, I got a piece of thread, oh, 20 inches long or so, I'm going to tie a knot at the, at the end. I'm going to make a loop, stick the tail through that loop. I'm going to do it three times. I have two layers of wool on, in the embroidery hoop. So there's my three little knots. And it will give it some um, body and some structural integrity. If I had one piece of fabric here, it would want to tend to stretch, but with the two going in two different directions, it's not going to really twist around on us. So I've got my tail. I have not doubled the thread and I've got a knot on the end. I'm going to basically slide my hand underneath, come to that point there, slide my needle up. All right, so my needle's in place. I'm gonna do this white vine. So I'm gonna put three beads on. And only three beads. If I put on five or six beads and do this, it will be bunchy. We want this to be, we want it to lay nice and flat. So that's my spacing. So what I'm gonna do is put my needle all the way down. Now I'm going to come up in between, like say, bead number one and bead number two. Pull my needle up, give it a little tug, and slide the needle through two beads. And basically that's your one needle applique stitch. So all of this beadwork we talked about is all done in the same fashion three beads at a time, or two beads at a time. So we have our first three beads in place. I'm going to put on another three beads. And so I'm going to guess. I can see roughly the space of the three beads. 
So I'm going to put my needle in, push it down. So I have my second set of three beads. I'm going to slide my needle down, and I'm going to basically follow that, um, that crayon line, and it's going to twist around on us, come up between beads, the second and third bead, that I applied. Keep them fairly snug. You don't want to pull them too tight. And if you don't have your spacing correct, if your needle's too close or too far, you'll either end up with a space or the beads will all bunch up on you. Now we're turning a little bit. People here in the East, did a lot of floral work. All right, see that little gap I have going there? Not terrible. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. But so there's one bead a little shy. So I wanna keep my needle closer. So that's an example if, if you allowed the space for four beads and you only apply three. So I'm gonna put my needle at the end of the three beads, still following that that line, pull it tight, come back up in between those. The embroidery hoop keeps it, keeps your work nice and flat, easy to work with. It's not necessary to use the embroidery hoop. I frequently do this style of technique um, and hold the fabric on my lap. So here, my needle, I came up between right at the last bead, so I'm going to still go with that. Pull that thread tight, and I'm just going to go through one bead instead of two. You get the, you get the idea. Three beads. I'm going to follow that. And I'm basically guessing the distance that those three beads are going to travel, um, the space that I'll need to slide that needle through. Come back up. We'll work it up to the end, and then um, we'll go back and put some... So say we want to... Um, add a little single bead to the outside of this to give that vine little um, body to, to think it's almost like, you know, it has a little pricker on the side or a, a little stem. Adds character. This is enjoyable project. It's not very difficult. All right, so these will be the last three beads I'm going to put on. So I'm going to tack those last three down. I'm going to pull my needle up like I'm going to go through those beads, but I'm not going to go through. I'm going to push it back in. I'm basically going to go over the thread that I used to tack it down and slide my needle to the bottom. So there's the vine that I followed. Here's my thread. So. I want to travel from this end back down. Put my needle up. And we're just going to grab one bead at a time. I'm going to put it on this side. And I'll do one here. And same same thing as we worked our way up. I'm going to just put my needle in so there's one bead in that space. Pull that down. So this little vine that we're doing, we're giving it a little body, 
um, it's making it look like, oh, it has, you know, bumps on the side. It's just not a nice straight stem that's curling up. So at this point, we're getting close to that flower. I'm going to put on two beads. So it almost makes, gives it some look that it's actually growing and it's real and you know we're getting closer to the center of that flower so we're adding the two beads there you go let's flip this guy over so you can see we traveled up from here all the way up and now we worked our way back down you see the stitches that's about as far of a stitch as you want to see on the back side I mean, it's hard to see the stitches, but they're not going from this point to this point with the needle and thread. So there's our vine to our flower. That's the single needle technique for the applique stitch. And this bag that I made 30 or 40 years ago, I did the green vine right up to the top, and I went back with the single bead. And as I got closer to the main design element, I applied two beads just like we did today. So at this point, I want to go into that two needle technique. My theory with the two needle technique is when the beads came over to this country, they were strung on the factory string that I have here in front of me. And there were not a lot of needles in this country. Steel was expensive. Those needles all had to be imported into this country. So we're working with 10 o seed beads. And for example, this bag here, note the, the mustard and the white center red beads, they're very small. I'm gonna lay my 10 o seed beads right next to them. And you can see the size difference. So for instance, these people didn't have a needle small enough to work with that bead, they're gonna apply that two needle technique. So they're going to use the factory thread. They're not going to restring the beads. They're going to keep the beads on that factory thread and take that second needle and tack down those beads on the fabric they're using, using that factory thread. So to start, we're going to work on this other vine. And my thread is, oh, 20, 24 inches. So I'm going to basically slide that needle up through and stick my factory thread into this hole. You know. We're going to do a vine similar to that. So at the beginning, slide my needle up. show you for an example. So that's the needle coming in from the backside. I'm going to take my factory thread, stick it through the hole, and pull all of it to the back. Now I have my thread in the back. I'm going to tie the factory thread off. I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to tie one more knot. I don't want this knot pulling back through to the other side. So, flip this over carefully. My string of beads is secured on the back side. I don't obviously need this much beads. So I'm going to slide these beads off. Now, so there's the first thread. I'm going to take my second needle, go up from the back. And I'm going to tack every two beads down. Now we want to turn a little bit here, so I'm going to put my needle here. Move my thread. So the two needle technique, I can basically thread another needle onto this tail 
and secure it in place. But I'm just going to hold it for the time being. I'm going to slide those beads over. Pull it tight and continue. I want to pull it even further away from that. Make this guy really turn. We still want to always capture two beads. We don't want to do five beads. We don't want to do more than that. And this tack down thread that I'm using, you don't want to pull the factory thread real, real tight towards the black velt, towards the black wool. Just want it to pop through those two beads because um, if you, the beads all lay like this and you tweak it down with that thread, it's going to, the beads are always going to keep doing this so they'll end up with a little bump every time. You can see some of that in here. Um, they were probably tacked down three beads, um, three to five beads. See that example? You want that to lay flat. And I would have, now I would look at this and it said, oh, I should have tacked down them a little closer and not been so impatient or, or tried to put down more beads than what was going to look nice. If you look at this, for example, Beads are all nice. They line up perfectly. You know, not, one's not bumped out of place. Nice little spiral. And look at the two bead technique they did. So that, that vine has those bumps on the sides. So let's get this going. We'll basically work this to the end and then we'll go back and add the two beads um, down the side, the sides of the vine. So whether you're doing the white bead for the vine or you're filling in a, a big space or doing a flower, it's the same technique. And over time you'll become better at this and you'll be able to judge the distance that the needle's going to travel. And you don't need to measure it out every time. Okay, so that's my last, last thread I'm going to tack down. So that's what I have left. So I can do one of two things. I obviously cut that extremely short to thread another needle to slide it through. So I'll do what we did in the beginning. I'm going to push my needle up and I'm going to go right at the end of that bead. Gonna stick that thread in and pull it to the back. So at this point, I should have left more space on this thread to tie a nice knot. So I'll tie these two guys together. One more tie. So I'm going to make a loop with a long thread, stick my little tail in, inside of it, inside the loop, and then pull it tight. There we go. So I'm going to t continue with this thread. We're going to travel back down and put the beads on the side. So I'm up at the top. And let's follow this example. And there two beads are going they're working away from the stem. They're not following the stem down. So look how much more with the two beads. Look at all the thread on the back. That's a lot of thread. I don't like to see it longer than that. Looks like I ended up with a little knot going on right there. So to end it off, I'm going to pull that guy tight. Go through that loop. Let's go through the loop one more time. This is the single needle technique. Three beads at a time. This technique, we use the factory thread. We use the second thread and needle to tack down as I traveled. And I tacked every two beads from this point 
all the way up to there. And then we put the two beads on the side and um, just traveled all the way back to the beginning. Flipped it over and tied your knot. So to continue to do the floral design in the center, same thing. I would use whichever technique you're comfortable with. Start in the middle, do the bead work around, do it around and around, outline it first, then go back and fill it in. It's what they refer to contour beading. I did the outside lane first, and then I applied the next blue and the next blue, and I fill in whatever's left over for space. So I get my design element by traveling the outside all the way around, and then I fill in. So if you're short for the center and didn't take five beads, it took three beads, you don't really notice the difference. So outline it first, then fill it in. That's basically the two needle technique and the single needle technique applique stitch used on a variety of projects, variety of tribes across the country used a very similar technique. Happy beading, be creative, start off with something small before you jump into a big project, you'll be happier with the results. This potentially could be cut out into a bag. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching our videos. You can order supplies and learn more about Native American crafts by visiting our website, wanderingbowl.com. On our Facebook and Instagram pages, you'll find weekly specials, a schedule of upcoming events, and interesting historical facts about Native American culture. We not only sell supplies, we use them ourselves, as you've seen in these videos. And if you ever need help with an order or a project, you can always give us a call at 1-800-430-2855. We'd love to hear from you.